नमस्कार जी आई वॉज म्यूटेड सो आई कॉन्ट स्पीक गुड मॉर्निंग आई कॉन्ट हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल गुड मॉर्निंग देशदीप मॉर्निंग इट्स अ प्लेजर टू लिसन टू दिस टॉक सर थैंक यू यू वेलकम देशदीप गुड टू सी यू आफ्टर लॉन्ग टाइम थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाउ आर यू सर फाइन गिविंग गुड हेल्थ या या सर इट इज वेरी नाइस टू सी very nice to see the flower you so here and now it becoming a fruit a juicy fruit very <laughs> nice to see sir <laughs> yeah thank you sir well, thank you well, for the great efforts uh, they the the director literally says he is enjoying fruits of our labor because yeah. there are uh, mangoes uh, grapes <laughs> and something something and even rudraksh tree is there which is <laughs> yeah sure sir we jaate satya murthy ji बात कर रहे हैं ना मैंगो मैंगो खन्ना आल्सो ऑन विद अस टुडे एमपी खन्ना आई सॉ खन्ना हिज नेम इज देयर मॉर्निंग प्रोफेसर खन्ना योर कैमरा इज ऑफ So maybe you can start now. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Should I start? Yeah. Oh, sure. One minute. I'll give you a hand over. Okay. Sure. Mahipal ji, ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we are ready. So, Professor Grover, we are starting now. Yeah. Thank you. So, good morning, everybody. the spsti society for promotion of science and technology in india welcomes you to today's lecture which is on the celebration of the 10th foundation day of institute for nano science and technology abbreviated inst our associates in this event are the chandigarh chapters of the academies nasi the insa as well as inyas the young academy inyas has been particularly active in the organization of these lectures thank you inyas the present lecture is the fourth in the series visions six, okay. six in the series i stand corrected fifth in the series visions six, six. in the series visions of institutes in 
Northwest India in run up to India at 100 in 2047. The series started on Teachers' Day, September 2022, and will continue till 15th August this year. The Punjab State Council is also associated with this series. We are also celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, second edition, that is Azadi 2.0. So welcome, Professor Patra, and once again, felicitations to Professor Ganguly, today's eminent scientists on our forum. Welcome, both of you and the INIAS representatives. Thank you very much. So over to you, Neha, who will conduct today's lecture since I will be moving. Neha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the uh, introduction to today's sixth lecture in the series. Now I request a Professor Arun Grover to kindly uh, give the introduction to the lecture series as well as to the guest of honor. Sir, to you. So good morning, all. It's my pleasure to welcome all of you to yet another lecture in our series, Vision of Institution in Northwest India. This series marked for us the start of an era which our Prime Minister named as Amrit Kal. The last lecture of this series shall be delivered by the new Vice Chancellor of Punjab University, namely Professor Renu Vich, on Saturday, August 12, 2023, just before the next Independence Day on August 15, 2023. The last lecture of our previous series, titled Institution Building and Nurture Initiatives in Independent India, was delivered by the then Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Professor Ashutosh Sharma on August 13, 2022. And all those lectures are available on the SPSTA website for offline listening. Professor Ashutosh now is the President of the Indian National Science Academy. And I trust that he would join us for the last lecture of the second series on August 12, 2023. Today's lecture is being delivered by Professor Amitava Patra, the director of INST. He has very thoughtfully titled his presentation as On the Celebration of 10th Foundation Day of INST. For the online audience today, let me state that the year 2023 also marks the completion of 10 years of existence of Chandigarh Region Innovation and Knowledge Cluster. The then director INST, namely Professor Ashok Ganguly, was one of the signatories of a document of understanding which was adopted on the National Technology Day 2013 by the Crick institutions. Professor Ganguly kindly accepted to be the guest of honor at today's lecture being delivered by his worthy successor, Professor Amitava Patra. Professor Patra and Professor Ganguly are indeed two outstanding material scientists of India and the SPSTI and the Chandigarh chapters and INYAS feel proud in hosting them together today. The gift of INST and an ISA to Mohali by the then Prime Minister of India was an act of gratitude to the people in the Northwest of India. By Northwest, I mean the region of erstwhile Punjab state, Rajputana and the state of Kashmir for which the University of Punjab at Lahore was established in 1882. PU campus in Chandigarh, the nucleus of Crick, drives its legacy from the university created at Lahore by bifurcating the domain of the University of Calcutta. It's my fond hope that the present Prime Minister of India will accept the invite from the Director INST to visit the knowledge sector Mohali on the occasion of the formal celebration of 10 years of INST and dedicate the newest National Center of Excellence, namely INST, which is fully functional today. This the center would get de dedicated by the Prime Minister during this year. This is my fond hope. INST is indeed fully functional. The facilities created by INST sci scientists are expected to play an important role in the realization of some of the goals of the new quantum initiative blessed by the Prime Minister during this year's budget. This was launched just about 10 days ago. I have been assigned the responsibility of formally introducing 
the guest of honor, Professor Ashok Ganguly. He hardly needs an introduction for our, our audience. He has been a quintessential part of CRICSI since its inception. I have personally known Professor Ganguly since his PhD days with Bharat Ratna Siena Rao at IISC at the beginning of the ITC era. He had proceeded to do postdoctoral work with another doyen of condensed matter, namely John D. Corbett at Ames Laboratory in Iowa, Iowa Star State University, which indeed was a leading center for dissemination of research in ITC superconductivity once the ITC era began. John Clem and Carl Geschneider were two stalwarts who were at Ames at that time. I had the good fortune to know both of them and I had hosted them at the IFR Mumbai. Professor Ganguly had returned to serve at the Department of Chemistry of IIT Delhi from Ames and he rose to the position of Deputy Director, Planning and Strategy. He is indeed a highly decorated scientist with over 300 publications, numerous books and reviews. When his 60th birthday was commemorated in the hybrid mode by IIT Delhi during the pandemic, all the leading physicists and chemistry, chemists of India had participated in it. Only last year, he was honored with the prestigious CNR Rao Shastra Award. Mr. Ganguly assumes the directorship of Isa Bhuneshwar on May 2, 2023. While wishing the best, best of luck in his new assignment, I invite him to briefly address, address us before the lecture by the main speaker, Professor Amitava Patra, Professor Ganguly. Thank you, Professor Grover, for such a kind introduction. I thank uh, SPSTI and the bodies of INIAS, NASI, and other organizations uh, like Punjab State Council of Science and Technology and other uh, associated with this very nice program, uh, well thought out on this uh, special occasion of 75 years of Indian independence. Uh, just because I probably what people would like to know is about the beginnings of INST. And, uh, you know, I first came to know that there is something like INST going to come by Professor Satyamurti, who is here. Because I was going for a meeting uh, in 2011 via Chandigarh, and I happened to stay in the guest house. And it was evening and Professor Satyamurti said something they showed, I could not make out at that time, it was dusk, that this is where some nano institute is going to come. This was 2011. And then I did not know that, uh, you know, uh, I was nominated for this position and I was interviewed by five secretaries, Professor M.K. Bhan and DST secretary, Professor, of course, Professor Rao, chairman of the nano mission. And there were others like TIFR director, et cetera. And then I joined on uh, 3rd of January. I had a visit in December to the uh, very nice building, which I think exuded a positivity, the red building in sector 64 or phase 10. And uh, we, the idea behind this nano institute, I believe, was that there should be three nano institutes, one in Mohali, one in Calcutta, and one in uh, Bangalore. So the Bangalore one has started as CEN, C E N S, and Mohali got a new institute. The Calcutta one did not take off. And the vision was to have all aspects of nanoscience and nanotechnology, including agriculture, drug delivery, nanophotonics, uh, uh, nano sensors, nano devices, nano catalysts for energy, environment, microfluidics, nanofluidics. And the people from various backgrounds, chemistry, physics, bio, pharma, should be working together under one roof. And that was the idea with which INST was made. Uh, it had to make an impact from taking the science to application. And that was the initial motivation to involve scientists with all industries. We got tremendous also support from interacting with the neighboring institutions. Knowledge City was a great plan of the Punjab uh, government. And we had institutions like ICER, NABI, CIAB, Punjab University, PGI, Dihar, TBRL, Punjab State Council, and Punjab Groundwater Board, et cetera, with which several uh, projects could be initiated. 
Uh, several industrial projects could be initiated with IOCL, NTPC, Tata Steel, etc. Uh, I think we had a very young uh, faculty. I, around 36, we could, I think, appoint by in two years, three years time. Uh, they were all outstanding young faculty working in different areas and uh, doing interdisciplinary research and also taking part on many activities. After joining within one year, we hosted the in, uh, International Conference on Nanotechnology, which is ICONSAT. Apart from that, we used to participate in Bangalore Nano, India International Science Fair. And one of the classic collaborative works which came out was the Khurana International Conference, first time in India, hosted jointly with Punjab State Council uh, and NABI, actually. And it was a wonderful meeting. All the great uh, people of Khurana's legacy came to Mohali. Uh, we also had uh, all the basic facilities generated under one roof. Apart from that, we had wonderful outreach program, including the one which I remember very vividly uh, in the sector 17 market where, where many people could come and interact. So uh, there were lots of these things and the faculty participated very well among uh, themselves and across faculty on various institutions. I must congratulate all the faculty who cooperated and I had cooperation of all of them. I had great cooperation from uh, all the uh, directors of the, my neighboring institutions. I must tell you that Dr. Sundarajan was the first appointed act, appointee director, like who was taking care and he was part of the society which was formed way back in 2008, 2009, I think. And he was taking care from ARCI Hyderabad and his financial person was taking care. So that was the beginnings of INST. We were supported heavily by Professor uh, Satyamurti, Professor Ajay Sud, Professor Grover, Professor Ram Gopal Rao, Professor Melan Sanyal, all of them in our research advisory committee who are stalwarts in India, Professor Ganesh, uh, Professor Sangwan, Professor Sharma, Professor Jatinder Kaur, Professor Nilima Jairat, Dr. Y.K. Chawla, R.K. Sina, uh, Professor Chaurasia and his predecessor, Professor Rao at Naipur. I have great, I had great cooperation from them. I think Mohali it was a wonderful place for me. I learned a lot and I congratulate INST, which has grown in leaps and bounds and is celebrating the 10th anniversary. I'm sure Amita will be sharing all the details much more. This was my introduction. Thank you for having me here today on this very uh, auspicious occasion of 10 years of INST. It was wonderful with all the faculty and all my neighbors in Punjab, in the Tri-City area. It's a great place to be and wonderful things can be done together. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you sir for such a nice introduction and such nice words about INST Mohali. I'm sure many of us didn't know about it. So now it's time to go over to our today's speaker, uh, Professor Amitava Patro. So I request uh, Professor KK Bhasin to kindly introduce our speaker of today. Sir, over to you. Sir, you are muted. Thank you. Can you listen to me? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, my dear colleagues, fellows, and members of NASI, INSA, INIAS, scientists, researchers, ladies and gentlemen, I take this profound privilege in extending a warm welcome to you all in this August online gathering on behalf of members and governing body of the promotion of science and technology in India, Chandigarh chapter of NASI, INSA, in IAS with the support of Punjab State Council for Science and Technology. I take this distinct and rare opportunity in introducing a highly accomplished and profoundly decorated scientist of the country, Professor Amitabha Patra. He is currently the director at the Institute of Nanoscience and Technology, INST Mohali, and a senior professor at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. Professor Patra was born in 1965 and received his PhD in 1993 from Jadavpur University. He had his postdoctoral assignments at various, various places, 
And I would just like to mention Professor Patha is among the world's top 2% scientists in 2001, 2020 and 2021 with the global ranking of 149 in physical chemistry. In the year 2023 edition of our ranking of top scientists in the field of material science from research.com, he ranked 4156 in the world and 37 in India. He pioneered the study of two photon spectroscopy and ultra, ultra fast carrier dynamics for light harvesting applications. Professor Patra has been elected as a fellow of the Optical Society of America, OSA, and the Royal Society of Chemistry. He is a fellow of the Indian Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of Sciences and Indian Chemical Society, India. He is the recipient of numerous awards, but I will like to spell out only the prominent ones. The Acharya Jesse Ghosh Memorial Award, National Prizes for Research in Chemical Spectroscopy and Molecular Structure, MRI SI ICSI Material Science Annual Award, Sienna Rao National Prize for Chemical Research, Department of Atomic Energy SRC Outstanding Investigation Award, A.V. Rama Rao Foundation Prize in Chemistry, Asia Nano 2010 Award, CRSI Bronze Medal, Ramanjan Fellowship, and many, many others. He is the author and co-author of more than 260 scientific papers. And I'm very happy to mention that 80 papers in the Journal of Physical Chemistry he has published, five book chapters and two Indian patents. He was an advisory board member of Nanoscience, Journal of Physical Chemistry, Chemical Physics, Chemical Nanomaterials, and many more. His research papers have been cited more than 12,400 peers with H index of 60. May I now request Professor Patra that we all are looking forward to your talk on the celebration of the 10th Foundation Day of INST. Professor Patra, please. Very good morning and thank you very much. I express my gratitude to Professor Basin for his kind of work. And thanks to uh, uh, Society, uh, Society for Promotion of Science and Technology of India for giving me the opportunity. Thanks to uh, Professor Gover for uh, inviting me and as well as also because I'll be happy to share the growth and uh, achievement of INS team uh, of, uh, of last, uh, last couple of years because he has started uh, the INST in the old campus. So I, I'll be very happy and thank you Grover for arranging this meeting. So I feel privileged to get the opportunity. First of all, I must uh, say that I have a little bit changed. Initially, I thought I'll talk about the 10th celebration because last month we have celebrated uh, nicely on the 10th anniversary of INST because we have a scientific meeting with two foreign speakers and uh, then the cultural program and other things. Then uh, yesterday, I thought that I should you know, focus on comprehensive growth and achievement of INST. It is, it is very important for this. And I came from the Institute that is Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science that is 147 years old. And this is the oldest research institute where Sivir Oban got the Nobel Prize from there. And I came to the youngest research institute that is the INST just three years back during the COVID time. Sometimes people say COVID director. Now begin with the, uh, the goal, mission and vision of the artist. So our vision for the INST to emerge a globally competitive India's foremost research institute in nanoscience and technology. Research at INST is fully dedicated for nanoscience and technology because not only science, we have to develop some technology for societal aspect. And it, we, have, we have a multidisciplinary uh, flavor and we have different kind of multidisciplinary faculty in our institute that is chemistry, physics, biology, engineering, agriculture, and pharma. Our mission is to emphasis on cutting edge research that is good science on nanoscience and technology. In, the, in, in multidisciplinary fashion, especially we are focusing right now in three major areas, that is energy environment, uh, quantum materials, 
and healthcare or, or chemical and biology, our motto is knowledge of nanoscience for the nation. So why the core objective is the nanoscience technology nowadays, you know, that's enable, enable our both in term of future economic growth and uh, to improve the quality of life. Because if you look at the literature, if you go to the market, then you will see 9.8% growth, uh, that 9.2% uh, of the global market of nanotechnology. What is the impact? The impact is that the large pool of skilled human resource is in nanotechnology at different level is very important. To, uh, to establish your technology or establish your company or anything, right? So this is the right forum because if you look at the national education policy, this is the right choice because we have to, uh, we have to uh, uh, make uh, our skill human resource. That is very important. These are the fundamental things. So core point of action is very important what I believe. It is now the responsible, this is our responsibility to adapt the future generation of the scientists to be rewarded or recognized for a new or more inclusive definition of excellence because we want to excel, right? So we commit a couple of things. One is place more emphasis on great science, not just top professor, because that is only very individual thing. So we must emphasis to include the team research. That's why you multidisciplinary research, collaborative research, and we should emphasis on teams, technician, and multi collaboration. That is very important for the growth of the science. Second point is that give greater recognition to the people who teach us science and inspire the emerging scientists for the future. That is very important. This is our responsibility. Showcase leaders who go beyond their day job to break down the barriers and open up new and extraordinary opportunity in science that we have to encourage. And fourth point, the celebrate the scientific breakthrough that transform our understanding of the world and resolve the major issues. That a lot of issues are here. So in my point of view, for the scientific growth of any research institute or any countries, Two important criteria is there. Scientific knowledge is very important because scientific knowledge is another form of art that C.V. Raman told, right? Second thing is the skilled human resource because we have a lot of human resource if you compare with China. But unfortunately, we don't have that skilled human resource. So if we can make the skill and national education policy also emphasize on the skill, human resource and multidisciplinary research that actually fitted with our nano issue, nano science and technology. And that's why the science can progress with these two important things. Now, to begin with, because Professor Ganguly is here, that uh, he is actually founding, he is actually the, uh, under his leadership, that INST is founded on 3rd January 2013 in the Habitat Center that is uh, Sector 64 Mohali. And he spent five years. I know because I came here on 13 January uh, during his Osage time when he joined me. Then after one year that Bharat Dhamma Professor CNR Rao inaugurated the Faraday Lab. That is the beginning of the research at INST. And, and that's that time he took a lot of pain for this. And I know each and every point on that time. So next one is the stone lying ceremony at INST in the new camp. That is 2014 on 2nd March, foundation stone lying by the Professor CNR Rao, the then DST director, uh, DST secretary and other dignitaries. INST new campus Bhumi Puja happened on May 2017. And new campus project started on 15 March 2018. This is the beginning of the new campus because I have joined here in 11 March 2020, just after one week, there is a, there, there is a COVID situation, right? And I was stuck eight months in the old guest house, in the old guest house. So when I joined here, 
So that time I have seen the 95% civil and all work package has done. There is no fall ceiling, there is no water, there is no electricity in that campus. So electric is a fast water and bijli chahiye. So first we targeted, we need water in the new campus and electrical connection we should have. And initial the project cost was 260 and we have saved 40 crore rupees for the government money. And we have completed that project in 216 crore rupees. And in 2020, end of 2020, we have shifted all the faculty, student, guest house, everything. Now, that, that time when I joined here, that time this is the loop. This is the main uh, gate near the guest house, near the married hostel. This is the lab situation. There is no fall ceiling there. So from there, during the lockdown, we have done with the help of our faculties, with the students. This is the situation. Then first in 15 July, first we do a first tea plantation done over here in the new campus with a few students. And we have celebrated the independence day at the new campus 2020. And these are the different phase we have moved. First phase, the furnace lab, NPDL lab, ISA lab, Second phase, CIV lab, and all these things. And third phase, director office, faculty office, administrative office, Faraday lab from the sector 864. And slowly we have shifted directors. I have moved to the new campus, the first person to the, in the new campus in the October, end of October, shifting the hostel, shifting the scientist apartment. And this is the now new uh, campus. There we have a tank in, we have a unisex salon grocery shop and, and other facilities there. But for the students, what we have done for the last two years, yes, recreation facility for the students, that is very important aspect, right? Because we have a badminton court, we have a, a cricket ground, we have a football match, football court, indoor table tennis, lawn tennis, even this is a very nice campus, very green campus. And again, on the same time, we have started the yoga classes every Saturday, every Saturday for the student, faculty, and staff member. This is very important uh, for the students, for the growth of their, because a lot of tension, a lot of pressure are there. So, and we have arranged a lot of workshop, this is one, that workshop for mental health management that is very important for the growth, for the doing good research, mental health management and professional values development, by Samiji from the principal of Rahola Ramakrishna Mission. That is in last, last year. Now I'll talk about the academic overview. This is the, uh, because sometimes I want to divide the two part, one administrative part, one is academic part. This is most important, then only will be recognized, right? So what is the overview in last couple of years? We have 38 faculties right now. And uh, there is a couple of uh, emeritus professor, Professor A.K. Sood is our emeritus professor, T.P. Singh, and Professor D.D. Sharma in our emeritus professorship. And uh, there are, we have, we have only four uh, staffs, administrative staffs, two, uh, one CFO, one FO, and two other uh, stenographer, and uh, all other outsourcing. So uh, this is the faculty ratio. You can see 28% faculty, female faculty, student uh, ratio also 50-50% almost. That is the unique uh, things in INST. So what is the academic program? Because uh, Aizar Mohali, we, our student has registered mostly 90% maybe, Aizar Mohali, Punjab University and PEC. And after joining here, I, I started working with ACSI with the help of our faculty. And we have signed a MOU with ACSI system. So we have Institute RA program, we have internship, we have uh, sponsored academic program from different, even Ramanujan Fellowship, Inspired Fellow also there, and independent internship and internship from the MOU. I'll talk about later. Now, if you look at the graph, the number of students from 40, that time there is no facility, very small space. But I joined in March 2020. If you look at August session, we have hired 53 students, 53 number of students. Why? 
because that time we have calculated, we discussed with our faculty because that time number of students is very less. For the growth of institute, we need number of students. That time from institute, I have given phone number of PhD student, one RA to each and every faculty. So this is one kind of step we have taken. But now recently from last year, number three number of PhD student from the institute head and maybe one RA or something. This is the growth. And now uh, see the female and, and, and male ratio that is there. So now total number of PhD student is right now 223. The huge growth, huge growth of the student number of students. Otherwise you cannot do good research, right? And all alumni students are well placed in different, different well-known universities uh, all over the world. And uh, so in 2020, this you, you, can, you, can, you can figure out the numbers. So there's a good number of students, very vibrant uh, atmosphere. And obviously there is a dynamic system is different, not static. Now, what is the achievement? The achievement total publication last year we have done from here 240 papers. And what is the nature index? In all subjects, we are ranking 22. In, in, 20, in 2020, when I came that time, 39 rank. And in KMST, rank was 30. Now is rank 80. And we have a plan to go at least 15 within a couple of years. This is our rank. And in KMST, in, if you compare with all the research institutes, including MHRD, we are number 18. And in DST, we are number three after ISCS and GNCS are in chemistry. So this is a huge achievement. And, and thanks to all the faculties, all the students, all the members of the INST, because they are working hard. This is the only, only proof they are, they are, their performance is excellent, right? And this is this is one thing. Even our faculty strength, if we compare it to any MHRD system in chemistry department, we have a less number of faculties in our in our whole institute, right? So if we compare the rank with the performance, INST is is, is excellent, excellent at par because that is in chemistry, in physics, in 23 rank, in all subjects, this is 20, second 22. So this is this is this is this is called the achievement. Now I'll talk about the science because uh, first I'm a professor, then I'm a director, right? The directorship only for five years. So I have two labs in both in Calcutta over here, but I want to show that we have three different units, energy, environment, healthcare, and quantum material and devices because most of the chemist people are working on energy environment, quantum materials and devices, physics people, and biology, agriculture, and other pharmacy people are uh, faculties are working on healthcare and agriculture. But our strategy aligned with the INST's objective to build multidisciplinary research for national and international recognition, not only national recognition, for international recognition. Now in energy environment, this is one unit. They say they are doing a lot of good stuff, uh, excellent, important activity they are doing. Uh, so nanostructure material, nanoporous organic framework, soft material for different applications. One is majorly on energy conversion, energy storage, uh, environment, solar energy, catalysis, and sensing purpose. But I cannot cover all these aspects, but I'll, take, uh, I, I'll discuss something about my work in this part. So important uh, thing, what is the important thing why people are interested on energy environment part? Because if you look at that renewable energy, if you go through the pie chart, you will see that 11% only energy is coming from the renewable energy. Because 80% is energy coming from the fossil fuel. Everybody knows and this will be drier. So the present global energy consumption rate is 6.3 terawatt and it will go up to shoot up up to 40 terawatt. This is the important problem. So that's why we try to address few issues. We want to develop some new material and to uh, contribute on the renewable energy. Because if you look at the right curve, there is new material, perovskite or some, uh, some quantum dot material based system. The energy efficiency can increase to 30%. This is one aspect. Another aspect, the global warming because of the carbon dioxide. 
because carbon dioxide level increases to 600 ppm and that will that will give you the impact of 2 degrees centigrade so lot of people in our institute they are very active on catalysis path so they try to develop different kind of efficient nano catalysis to reduce carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide for preparation ammonia for 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 preparation hydrogen gas or other important aspects so now the question is that people want to harvest light because we know the solar cell we know the photosynthesis process where you convert the light energy to the chemical energy but in artificial light system we want to convert the sunlight to the electrical energy and there are two important aspects one is optoelectronic application where you can convert the electrical energy to the optical energy through the energy transfer process because this energy transfer process in different time scale is occurred in femtosecond to picosecond time scale in photovoltaic or solar cell application where optical energy sunlight can be converted to the electrical energy to the charge transfer or electron transfer process because this electron transfer process takes place in picosecond and nanosecond time scale and we are very expert on that part on, on understanding in femtosecond time scale and all these uh, basic physical chemistry or physics so what is the challenge in the solar cell the challenge in the solar cell if you look at the solar spectrum 33% energy losses due to the thermalization process. Now, what is the thermalization process? Why we could not go up to 33% energy transfer of the solar cell application? What is the important issue? Because you cannot excite, you cannot pump your solar cell in particular wavelength. In lab, you can do, but when you excite your semiconducting system above the band gap, then this excess energy goes to the higher level and that will uh, goes down to the conduction band due to the thermalization process and huge physics is there. This thermalization process, it takes place in one picosecond time scale because carrier, carrier, carrier photon interaction and that's why heat up the system and that kill the efficiency of the material. Now, how do you overcome? You can make multi-jectional photovoltaic cell. You can do carrier multiplication process. You can do cigarette fission process or extraction of hot carrier when after exciting the above the band gap that if you can extract then you can go up to theoretically it is predicted if you extract the hot carrier you can go up to 66 percent efficiency of the solar cell but that's why people are working and different kind of material to extract different kind of hot carrier before coming to into the conduction band in case of photocatalysis very simple same principle is going on because when we excite in semiconducting system because people are working in nanostructure material heterostructure material to tune their band gap because to to excite they goes from valency to conduction by an electron and most of the cases in oxide system there is a problem there is no exciton uh, binding is, is there there is all the trap state or defect state is generated and that is the complicated system. That's why you cannot control sometimes. But what is the basic principle for the photocatalysis? You excite your semiconducting system. Electron goes from the valency to conduction band. If you use this electron for the reduction purpose for the hydrogen ion to hydrogen gas, you can prepare or by using the oxidation process by using the whole transfer. So the important fundamental thing that how the dynamics of the electron and hole how and what kind of band gap, whether heterostructure type two is good or what kind of material is good, that kind of thing, that designing part, our people are working over here. And in case of photovoltaic, you just extract that electron and hole in anode and cathode and you can generate the photocurrent. That is the basic principle. That is the, that's why you can generate the photovoltaic or solar cell application, right? So these are the basic principles for the photovoltaic and solar cell. And what are the new materials nowadays for the solar cell or, or device application? In my experience, we are working on perovskite system, clusters, 2D material, conjugated polymer, and quantum dot for light harvesting, for generating different kind of photo detector or, or different applications. Now, why people are using perovskite for the solar cell or, or photo detector application? Most important criteria for the solar cell application, 
the less binding energy of the exciton. Because if you have a less binding energy, then you can easily extract that electron and hole. If you have a high binding energy, then you cannot extract that electron and hole. They will recombine and they will generate light. In case of OLED, light emitting that or LED, that's why polymer people, people are used because the exciton binding energy is very high and less charge mobility. And people are interested on perovskite for solar cell application because less binding energy and increase the charge mobility and quantum dot immediately. Now I'll give a couple of examples. Now the important thing in case of semiconductor, if you exceed exact band gap, then you can generate electron and whole exciton thing and recombination process though going on. But in most of the cases, if you excite your system, if you pump your system above the band gap, that electron generate the hot carrier due to the thermalization process. It takes place in one picosecond time scale. And that create the hot carrier generate the excitation pump energy greater than band, uh, band gap. And that hot carrier relaxation, it depends on the carrier, carrier, carrier phonone, phonone, phonone scattering. And we are, we, we are working, we are expert on this space. So this is my work from my group being a director. I can publish last two, three years on 2D semiconducting nanoplanet. Very few people in India are working on because 2D material people are working, especially MOS2, WS2 or graphene oxide. But we are working on 2D semiconducting cadmium selenide nanoplanet to understand the relaxation phenomena to use this for, for photo, uh, photo detector application or for other, other, other performance. So why we are interested on to this structure? Because cadmium selenate semiconducting, if it is a quantum dot, it is a C quantum confinement is different, but when it is a one plate single one dimension, that quantum confinement in one direction, and then the band diagram is different, then you don't have only the homolomoid band and connection band, you have a light hole and heavy hole system because spin orbit coupling. And there is a very sharp emission band. It is very high exciton binding energy around 130 millivolt to 230 millivolt. And this material is very good for lasing application because high absorption coefficient. That is very important for light harvesting system. Any case of photovoltaic or solar cell application because number of photons required to absorb in your system. That's why the large absorption cross section is very important. And these are the things I will not go into the detail, but the application for 2D first time we have shown the 2D semiconducting 2D structure that will give a very good photo detector because silicon we know that is 10 to the power 13 joules or 10 to the power 14 joules. This is only silicon in the visible range the detector is available in the market. First time we, we introduce that 2D structure if you have a proper acceptor, then you can have a charge transfer process and that will give a charge separation and that will give a photo current. It huge 600 times increases the photo current and that will give a photo detector application. Now another new material that is perovskite system, everybody knows by changing the composition, cesium lead bromide this is very simple system. You can tune different kind of light, you can band gap, you can tune. Uh, because of uh, less binding energy, so easily you can separate the electron and hole, you can make a photo detector application. But our interest to understand hot carrier relaxation process for this. Now we have published from this perovskite system, this number of paper last two years by using the perovskite, mainly try to understand the hot carrier cooling and energy transfer dynamics by using the femtosecond laser, by carrier dynamics and all these things. This is the last two years papers. So now the question is that why people are interested on hot carrier? What is the physics behind it? Because the phonon vibration is very important because now we try to understand the yellow phonon mode. We try to understand what is the lifetime of the yellow phonon mode. When we make a heterostructure system, we have seen that heterostructure system yellow lifetime is 256 femtosecond when is only the cesium lead bromide that is 100 femtosecond. And you can change, you can slow down the a uh, hot carrier relaxes in time from 700 femtosecond to 1.5. That is your interest, right? You want to reduce the hot carrier relaxes in time and before the recombination process. And that is, that is the, and you can calculate 
the hot area temperature also from 1653 Kelvin to 900 can we reduce so that the thermalization process you can reduce because now the question is the what kind of phonon vibration is there with some collaboration we have done phonon calculation by using the electron phonon coupling and first principle calculation we understand the Clemens channel you have used because because the large band gap between the longitudinal optical and the LO and LMO and that localization of the charge density in the heterostructure system because when the interface, the charge density is very high and that will up conversion from LO mode to higher energy and that will reduce your carrier relaxation dynamics. That will perfectly uh, we, we resolve this thing, what is the reason behind. Now, another thing we are working on polymer based light harvesting system. That is our, nobody is working in India on polymer nanoparticle. Polymer people are working. But interesting thing is that when it is a polymer nanoparticle, because of the intramolecular or intramolecular interaction, there is a lot of, lot of, lot of interaction of chromophoric unit. And that will change the Javelinsky diagram. Because in Javelinsky diagram, we know that S0, S1, and T1 state, right? SN state, then P1 state. But we have seen due to the intermolecular interaction that there is a new state that come up. This is the collective, collective uh, uh, delocalized state that is a CL state. And we first time by theoretical and also the, also the global target analysis of the femtosecond time scale, we have seen there is a huge change of the relaxation percent first time we have developed this model in case of polymer. Now we are working on self-assembled molecule because in our here very strong group or small molecule system or self-assembled structure for biological application because that is a new phenomenon and they are working excellent. And we have done a lot of work on the uh, relaxation process on that because this is good for the catalytic purpose and photovoltaic purpose. The last one we are working in our group on clusters because this is a new class of material, not metal nanoparticle, not molecular system in between molecule and nanoparticle system. If you change the number of atom, you can change their homolomo gap and everything that we have done. And the, from this group, we have published this number of paper and cluster group, we are working on biomimicking system for paroxy activity. We have done a couple of work on therapeutic application Mainly we are working on relaxation dynamic of cluster if we change the number of atoms, what is this, uh, how it happened. So all these even AI uh, aggregated induced emission we have done, we try to understand the mechanism. This is not so easy because of the ligand, you can, you can rotate, uh, rotation, you can restrict it and you can enhance the transition from the S1 to T1 and that will give the huge luminescence property. Now I'll come back again, our department, very active department. If you look at the bar chart, because you will see the publication, 2017, they have only 13 number of publication. Now 2022, there are 64 publication. And we have uh, now 13 faculties, just joined two faculties. And publication 1.18 uh, per faculty in 17, now uh, 5.82 number per per capita, per faculty, right? 5.82 per faculty in 2020, excellent, excellent. You cannot find out in any lab in India. This is a, this is a growth rate from our energy environment group. Now, not only they are doing good science, I cannot, uh, I cannot explain all these science, what they are doing, they are expert on their field. That's why in energy environment, this is my also field, that's why I highlight my work. But not only work, because the technology they have already developed for pollution control, carbon dioxide extraction of different industry waste, biomass, bio polymer-based uh, different kind of coating, and uh, for hydrogen generation, that is huge uh, impact, uh, hydrogen generation, ammonia, and different kind of graphene, they can prepare from different waste material. So there are a lot of technology they have done it. So I'll come what our next step. I, I'll come in the next couple of slides. What is the recognition from the faculty side? Only the energy environment group, right? All the faculties, if you, if you see last two years, what is their achievement? They are associated with their different uh, awards and all these international collaborations. They are 
internationally they want to uh, penetrate. And, and now in INST has a in global in global side in INST has a position because I also saw a couple of things because a couple of editors visited our campus because of our publication because in very very young age. Now they have all these facilities. This is uh, new, newly added this NMR facility. We are going to do more and more. This is the chemistry facility. Now I'll come to the quantum material unit and devices. Rightly said, Professor uh, Grover, that national quantum mission is the right choice because it is not a call. But we are definitely invite all the people, those who are around here, if they are interested, they can join us because we are going to submit a national quantum make a mission with the SNBO Center or other or the NCSF. So we have in this faculty member, we have 10 faculties, seven experimentalists, fixed rotation. Very interesting and, and very emerging field. They are working on spin tonic, thin flame. We are very much expert. We have thin flame, 2D material, computational, and nano devices. Now, we have recently launched, we have uh, developed our new HPC uh, clusters. That is, I think, 56 node. So we have uh, expertise in density function theory, molecular dynamics, and classical calculation using Boltzmann uh, equation. They try to understand different kind of physics behind it, what kind of uh, uh, electronic structure and everything to them. So this is the new setup we have in our new campus. So thin flame and 2D metal, it is already there. The TLD system, growth technique, TLD, MD, and CVD. Technique we have for different kind of heterostructure, graphene, flexi, uh, self uh, power electronics. And spin tonic and uh, spin tonic and magnetism, they have expertise, very expert. Uh, they want to make different kind of heterostructure material, magnetic structure, engineering, different kind of atomic scale control they can do. So there's a couple of slides I want to, uh, I want to show you here because they want to uh, work on spin current generation that is very interesting field in heterostructure system, how they can control the electron density into the interface and that will control that magnetic damping also all spin, spin current density. That is very interesting material for the quantum materials and spin mixing conduction. I cannot go details because I am not expert on this field, but the flavor of the thing I have given this is another interesting thing, I think, compared to the quantum mission project, spin tuning material. These people are now interested on flexible spin tuning material based on the three important criteria. This is spin tonics, piezoelectronics, and flexi-electronic property. So the strong spin orbit coupling is very important. Different 2D material structure is now a very app, very emerging for this, uh, for this application. And they are usually they are interested in zinc telluride, cadmium telluride, and MG telluride because to, to compromise that RASBA constant, piezoelectric coefficient, and young modulus, they always want to do low young modulus so that the flexibility will come. So this is their basic idea that I'm representing with. If you are interested, you come visit and interact with our faculties. So this is another area of electronics. Uh, this is MOS2, different kind of 2D layer structure. They have done a lot of calculation and uh, charge and spin of electron. That electronic electronics also very important material uh, for, 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 for this quantum material mission. So now nano device. This is our 10,000 class uh, clean room facility in our new campus. This is, I, I think it is a very important uh, device, uh, clean room facility in our new campus for device application. We have expertise micro nano fabrication, 3D printing, piezoelectric nano generator for cell power, healthcare monitoring thing, all these microfluidics we have expert. So uh, artificial age of 2D material, lot of people are working and if anybody is interested, they can contact our faculty. So what is the instrument facility, TLD, CVD, MD, room, clean room facility, 3D printing, HPC cluster, AFM, Roman spectroscopy. This is, this is the latest uh, we have. We are going to purchase much more, many things in, in currently and in next couple of years. They have international collaboration all over the world and international collaboration also increases last five years. 
if you look at in the right hand uh, graph, that is number of flowers and increases. So uh, achievement from that department, very small department, right? And they have a huge deeper, huge achievement from the faculty side, uh, achievement from the student side, and number of publications. If you look at in 27, they have already around 30 paper, and now they have huge around more than uh, close to 80 papers per year. And uh, so this is a huge achievement from that small department. So now I'll come to the third part that is the uh, healthcare and agriculture, that is chemical biology unit where, where all, all, all biochemists, uh, pharmacists or, or agriculture people are working. They have three different mode. One is life science, biomedical, uh, science and pharmaceutical. And again, they are doing a lot of agriculture stuff is being very good. Nanotherapy, speak in arrow, uh, photothermal, uh, photothermal therapy to see engineering, soft nano structure material. I cannot cover, I am not expert on this, but these are the important areas. I'll, I'll couple of slides I want to show you. Uh, these are the nano therapeutic, all these cover based on the nano material for biomaterial uh, application for pharmaceutical and life science application. This is one interesting field. In a retinotherapy by using the melatonin and dopamine, they want to generate ROS, single oxygen generation, and they want to use it. Uh, so these are the biological stuff. I cannot, but this is the basic thing. This is the very new field, uh, retinotherapy. This is another field for Parkinson's disease. Their approach is different. There are nano formulation they want to develop by using different nano thing, because a lot of people are working on Parkinson's disease using aggregation of protein. So there is protein group also here, the aggregated, I cannot cover all this stuff, but this is one approach. This is another approach, uh, they, are, they are working on nanotherapeutic by using the gold nanoparticle. Again, this is another stuff, uh, they are working, this very new current field, people are working on it. Now in that, in this group, the number of publication hugely significantly increases from 2017-17 publication was now 2021-101. And the number of extramural finals increases hugely. So because of the students, because we have given the phone number of student, PhD student on one RA. I think nobody in India, no institute has given this number of students. So any other international collaboration is there. They are very active and they have developed already a couple of things for technology, nano spray, nano fertilizer, nano formulation, modified this kind of uh, homeostate, uh, uh, homeostate uh, properties. Now the infrastructure, what is the new infrastructure? We have uh, started the animal tissue culture room. We have the uh, cryo EM is installing right now. The advanced microscopy facility, GSM2 facility, we have upcoming this mass spectrophotometer animal house is going to start maybe within a couple of uh, months, almost done. So these are the infrastructure in last couple of years. And what is the annual event for academic activity? I have started a couple of name lecture or memorial lecture, C.V. Raman, S.S. Badnagar, S.N. Bose, J.C. Bose, and G.N. Ramchandran lecture. And annually, we have started uh, the meeting, energy environment every year, chemical biology and quantum material and diversity. Every year we have started last two years. And compulsory institute industry meet and research scholar day we have started in 21. It was started uh, first time in the new campus. We have signed different kind of MOUs with different international and national, with Russian university, with uh, Nano Sydney, uh, with ACSIR, RK Mission, Monipal University, University of Ladakh, JC Bose University for outreach and internship project. So these are the couple of pictures that JC Bose University, Ladakh University, Monipal University, and RK Mission, uh, Rahula Ramkrishna Mission, uh, Narendra Pur Ramkrishna Mission, and Belu Ramkrishna. Every year we invite 10 to 15 students from there to come over here for internship, we are taking care of the local hospitality, right? This is a very nice approach. And every year we have started this kind of things. And, and now we have a new campus. We have started uh, a different kind of uh, program. Uh, again, the plan is to skill human resource and to encourage the young mind 
and that's why we invite all the uh, local universities local colleges recently from different school different colleges they have visited our campus we have a long uh, interaction with the faculties to show their infra our infrastructure now for them what is the important criteria my motivations i have always trying to give a motivational talk or messages to the young generation what is the important things what is the fundamental element for excellence in 21st century science teamwork leadership and professionalism these are the important factors right so what is the basic quality for a young generation or for being a young scientist you should be creative you should be imaginative intuition persistent ability to collaborate you have to have a knowledge and you should be honest this is most important part because we are now with time we are losing our honesty right how to overcome the problem because most of the time when you are scientist you will face a lot of stress because of lot of thing lot of rejection paper rejection project rejection everything intense competition because of the peers and politics how to be a smart because everywhere there is a politics you have to know how to overcome that politics actually politics ruin us right so and balancing between family and work that is very important five d is very important in my perspective for the success of our life discipline dream determination desire and dedication that is most important aspect for the student i always say and leadership quality you may be good professor you may be good scientist but not be a good leader for a leadership what to be done integrate integrity is very much important for your country for your for your institute for your university skill is very important honesty is very important and emotional stability is very important because most of the indian are emotionally unstable right so most of the time we are emotionally black belt so emotional stability is very important time management is very important and other important parameters that's why i always motivate the young generation when i go for outreach program now again the inst with industry recently we made 1912 22 we had bidla reliance bidla reliance tata and 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 unilever all the big companies over here and we have a very interaction we have incubation and innovation center that is 9000 square feet now what is the outcome for the industry day because you can make different kind of meeting because i i always do that what is the accountability i spend the money for this industry what is the outcome yes outcome is here because reliance and unilever we have already nda we have signed and this year onwards we will send our student for internship and they are funding us and incubation center we have set up and section 8c company we have registered which is on the process will going to start independent incubation center and startup company very soon and I, I nst in dst this is the first only institute will be those who have a section 8 company and intensive research funding nda everything we have done this is outcome now about another project we have already discussed a long discussion with mint hyderabad for a big project exploration of metal nanoparticle this is the mission mode project this manufacturing and commercial experience they have visited us and we have a long discussion we have already submitted next project we have submitted with cell for net zero carbon emission this is the recently we have done with israeli company we have done on 22nd march and setting up a enabl lab in inst it will very soon it will come up so israel come israeli a, a huge a, a great delegates of 10 people came over here and we have a long discussion with them they came over here to visit and they are ready to ready to sponsor us in different different thing uh, to inst this is a, another important achievement with the israel in 20 this 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 year we have done now another activity number of bilateral meeting in inst from maybe around the year uh, around the area this is we have started the first initiative inst iser meeting inst csio uh, meeting intech csr meeting actually this idea i got from ak sud last time when he visited us he told me can you do this kind of collaborative 
this kind of bilateral meeting so that we faculty can interact they can give a joint project. This is our mission. And this time in June, there is a second phase. We'll do CSIR, uh, CSIR with INS team, 23rd or something in June. In CSR, they will host. This time we hosted. And number of works, of course. And this year, because of the anniversary, 10th anniversary, well, uh, in year long, there is a lot of program. But two major program is coming up. One is in the French program, one to 4th October an international conference from 6 to 8 November 2020, uh, 2026. Now important events in 21, in February, May, August, September, November, December, every month we have some activities, academic activities, right? In, in 21 again, Research Scholar Day where Somit Kumar Rai and Sanjeev Fadila gave a talk, JC was lecture by Asuta Sarma, DST Foundation by Sibram, and National Technology by Sobhik Maiti, Asima Chatterjee Memorial Lecture by Sundeep Barma, APJ Abdul Kalam Memorial Lecture by Didi Sarma, AK should give the first Sibiraman Lecture Series, and PN Prasad came over here for Nanotechnology Day. Important events in 2022. National Science Day Bilateral Meeting, Technology Day and Inauguration by, by uh, the, uh, I, I'll tell, this bilateral, all these meetings is going on. In again 22, Gavandi for that we hosted uh, for Horogovindo's lecture series. KK Vasiki gave a science data. Uh, Rajiv Ahuja gave a talk on foundation, ninth foundation, Rovindo Pandey from Michigan, Rodol from France, Udo Inisto and Chani from Research Scholar Day, and company people also gave a talk here. And Padda Vibhushan Bijoy Kumar Saraswat came over here to inaugurate our auditorium and give a technology day lecture. So this is another Anderson Gomes from the Brazil. So these are the few snapshots for different international speaker in last uh, two years, uh, 20, actually one year. This is 31st December 21. And this is Rodolf, this is Ravinda Pandey, this is Anderson Gomes, this is, uh, and this is the Kelly is the Kemcom executive editor in the right hand side. And this is again Guldi came over here. He's a nanoscale editor, chief editor, Rodolf and Jonathan Barr from the physics department of Hello University. They they came over here. Some national speaker, yes, AK Sud, Rajiv Ahuja, Padma Sri, uh, Padma Vishon, KK Vasin, T Pradeep. Uh, Tapas Chakravati was acting director of ICS and Tonu Sisada, the last week she came, director of Asian Boat and Sundeep Parma from uh, Kanpur IIT. So this is the last slide. So what to be done? What is our plan? To make a great future of India, this is the Vivekananda's quote. The whole secret lies in organization, accumulation of power and coordination of wills. That is very important. Coordination of wills and accumulation of power. Being one mind is the secret of the society. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for an excellent talk about the growth of INST and how the research has grown over the years. And I'm sure with the 38 faculty coming in the top 20 ranks, it, I think it's commendable and I think it's highly appreciable. Now the dais is open for any questions that anybody might be having. Can so, I stop sharing or what I'll do? Stop sharing or what I'll do? Uh, sir, as it's convenient for you, if you want to oh, refer to it. See, then I can see the people. Yeah. So if you have any questions, uh, everybody, please uh, uh, raise your hands and uh, we can have a question session. Yes, uh, Rajendra ji, please. So first of all, I'm sorry that I came too late. I was mistaken by that time. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, you showed that some, you invite the students from the university, uh, from the universities or the colleges, that you show them what is going on in the institute. My question is, how many times it's done in one year? For example, in Germany, they will do just twice a year, and then the people expect 
the student they should be interested in the science, which actually not is happening. Can what you is your experience? Can you tell me in COVID time, after COVID time, how many students came from <coughs> your university last one year? Pardon? In, during the COVID time, how many groups they cannot move, right? That yes, we it have started that we have started last one year. Okay. So time, nobody. And we have already given 15 school uh, colleges visited over here. Okay. Right? Every month, one uh, average. Yes. And okay. Thank you. It's perfect because we don't give a lot of time because our faculty, they don't have, because our research scholar do this. Because yes. this is the way. That's why I arranged research scholar day because they should have mm -hmm. that kind of leadership quality. Right. Initially, what happened? One or two lectures by our faculty have given in the auditorium, interact each other, then they have a either lunch box or something, then they visit to different because we should have some background. What okay. is the nano? What is it? This is we know how to do it. Okay. Because okay, thank you. This is only one year, right? Yeah, Deepak Ji, please you may go ahead with the next question. Yeah, Dr. Patra, thanks for a nice passionate talk actually. Uh, my question is that when you look at the budget of uh, the National Institute of uh, in, in US, uh, the Nanoscience Institute, it's about 1 billion US dollars, right? Yeah. I think you must be playing with a budget of 300, 400 crores maybe. I think that's my wild guess. So uh, India is uh, really uh, smart in uh, giving outputs at a lower cost as we have seen, seen in the space program. Uh, but the question remains is on the, uh, you know, the deliverability for a long time, sustained time. Uh, if I am allowed to say this, that we have seen some institutes, I won't name them, but they came with the wonderful, uh, you know, uh, fanfare about over the period of time, they seem to have lost stream. I think the people who know, uh, who are in the north things would understand what I'm referring to in this region, very region. So uh, now this is a wonderful opportunity for Punjab and India uh, per se that we have such a cluster of wonderful institutes here and you are putting things on track. What my question is that when you say $1 billion and you compare it to $200, 300 crore rupees, and then you want to be on the international map when you want to compete, what are the things which we can do better so that with the, such a small budget, we are on the international map, let us say at least competing with China. Okay. What is it that you think can be done so that at least we are in the race, we are counted for in the nanoscience because there's the frontier here going to be there for a long time. Okay. That's my question. Okay. okay. I Thank hope I get my very nice. First of all, I said that 300 crore rupees is given only for the building, not for the budget, for the research, first of all. Our budget only 60 crore rupees right now. So now the question is that we have an idea, we have a discussion because that's why. I have already a couple of MOU with different companies we have done so that they can use our instrument, we can earn the money. Second option is that if I open the AHC company in the incubation center, then I, I can earn a lot of money for our research. Third point is that that's why I always like to MOU with different big companies like Reliance, Unilever, Tata, and Billa also. Billa came over here. So this is, and also from international funding, I want to do because in Israel people, they came over because they have less number of manpower is there. So they want to develop different kind of bioformulation in India by using the Indian brain. And that is one strategy I have taken that in future India government will give the money for only salary or for maintenance they will not give money for your research, luxury research, right? So this is our different scenario. They will give mostly for mission month project, right? Not for regular, initially, maybe your time, in our time also 30 years back, that time is different thing. But that's why I always discuss with our BOG, with our RAC, with Research Council. This is our future plan, whether self-sustainability is there or not. That's why I'm very much eager to AHC company opening in INST because this is another problem. In DST, there is no such institute in DST, autonomous institute. They have a HC company right now. 
that's why but this is really is a very important issue but compared to the international standard because we have a renowned scientist over here internationally renowned two person ranking international all the journals editorial board this is the one kind of recognition because of the nano research they they invite us right they invite us for different journals for different and technology part in 10 years you cannot expect that technology in one day we can make it and we can sell it because indian structure is different compared to us china or others because our in our national companies they don't have uh, before 15 years they don't have a r and d sector they don't care they always purchase chinese or american or european product over here right now the situation has changed so hopefully it will have some but we have some idea we can do we are we are we are moving to that direction in that fashion right thank you but thank you sir any further questions or suggestions or comments anyone Professor Gangli, Professor Grover. Yeah, I just want to thank all of you because I have another meeting at 11.30. So it was very nice uh, listening to the growth and my best wishes to Professor Patra. Best wishes to you also. Taking ahead. And uh, thank you, SPSTI and other uh, colleagues at uh, Mohali. I must say it's a wonderful place to work in Mohali, Chandigarh area. There are great institutions and uh, a very, very cooperative people. I had a great time in my five years in Mohali, and I appreciate all the people who had helped me at that time. And I wish you good luck ahead uh, in your endeavors. Thank you, thank you, thank Professor you. Thank you, Grover, man. Professor Kea, and Professor Bhaseen, Professor Mr. Dharamveer, and thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Okay, now I request uh, Dr. Ramendra Sundar Day to kindly give the uh, vote of thanks. Um, okay. Uh, Professor so, Grover wants to say something. Okay, yes, Professor Grover, please. Sir, you are muted, actually. I are muted. Professor so, Patra, you identified at least three verticals. When a verticals, which is built around the pharma sectors, okay? A vertical which is built around the chemical sciences, okay? The vertical that is built around the physical sciences and engineering. So is it possible to create three consortia? You know, we have a very large number of scientists. 38 is a not a small number, okay? 38, so if you look at, say, IIT Roper or your neighboring institute, uh, Aiza Mohali. You, know, you have a number which is comparable if you look at the disciplines that you are cover, covering. The, in Aiza, uh, the physicist, chemist, biologist put together would be around 50. Okay, 50, 60. So there is a, a real possibility, and you have a Niper in your neighborhood, you have a Nabi in your neighborhood. So is it possible? when you are talking in terms of Section 8 company, when you are talking in terms of having self-sustenance for your, your own activities, okay, can you create three consortia in three different verticals and create take everybody along and see that in the long run, okay, you, you become a nucleus of a resource generator for these three verticals. Can I say something? Can I, yeah. say I don't know whether I'm making sense, but this is what I am. No, because, because if you, uh, that time I discussed long discussion with AKC. Idea was that's why a bilateral meeting we had started. Yes. It's, it's, but now what is the outcome? I asked them, can you give a note? Can you give what is the next step we'll take, whether we can apply for a bio project or a joint project? Nothing had happened. Sir, that, that you have to drive. You no, know, no, you no, no. Why I, I can give the guidance. No, you have to drive. It is not just the guidance. You have to work. Are not. No, 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 no. I have work with each of these teams, you know, on day to day. It will, it will automatically. I am not a guardian for a baby, right? 
I can guide, I can supervise. Yeah, you should. I always encourage this is the right platform to interact. You not a one for a paper you just publish together. This is not the long term goal. And we have started. Who has started this kind of thing? In one side, it cannot be done. From both sides, you have to do. Right? I have started this kind of forum for three different institute intake for biology, for chemistry, uh, physics, for the ISA, and CSR. And CSR is taking the serious action. And they are inviting us to be there in June. There is another meeting. Maybe we'll submit a big project together. But I need from both the sides. Because I have a lot of things to do. I can ask somebody, some senior scientist. You can take care then if any problem then. What is the utilize of the consortium? Maybe you can submit one project proposal, right? And it is, it is not necessary that uh, matching with everybody. Maybe two people can uh, submit a project. I have no objection. I always encourage this. I like this. That's why this multidisciplinary research is there. We have international collaboration. Can we? Can we show anything the national neighboring institute? We have done a big project. Yes, we have done with NIPAR and Intech, but it was not successful. We have a huge BADA project we have submitted. BADA project with, with NIPAR and, and Intech. That time we were supposed to get a cryotem, but that time it was not there. So I purchased the cryotem from my institute. That is, I am, if you, I am, I am interested, but I need a couple of scientists around over here who are really interested because I am here maybe a couple of years because they will stay here for a long time, right? That kind of overlap, that kind of platform, we can make it, but they have to use it. That is the whole idea. That's why I started the bilateral thing. That's why I started. I'm always open. I am always open to start. Yeah, violent, I it's all very good. I mean, I I was very delighted when you initiated the, when you initiated this annual meetings uh, together with the ISA and and those are the things which have to be continued and you have to you know continuously go to people to this thing. No, this year, no, 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 no. This year I have different plan. All the MU institute will come over here for one day or two days meeting. I have different kind of plan because I cannot wait for one, one, one part. I have different uh, multiple options and I have already started beginning with local university, with all MOE university. I'll meet over here. I'll give the course. All the, already we have started working on it. I have already started working. That will do. Good suggestion. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Grover. Uh... Pataji, I also have a suggestion that you should literally, I would suggest ki reduce a little bit of excess cost to the equipment so that everybody can access it much easily. And what, you want, what you want, because you know, last one year I talked to your thing that to make a, a, a roper uh, INST meeting, right? And you want to use HPC facility, you can, I can no, no problem. I always, because only three scientists are working here. We have 56 nodes. Even Ahuja was surprised you have this kind of facility over in Yes, we have a facility. You can do anywhere here, I think, and a long time back. Maybe yes. Before I came over here. So you can do, you can come over here. I, I always like that kind of interaction, scientist scientist interaction. I cannot force you, Nia, you should come and do something. No, I cannot. I cannot. There is a nice platform. You can go and our faculty is easy accessible. They can yes, easily, sir, they can sir. talk. And you know all these people in the same age group. Okay, sir. sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Uh, now I request Dr. Ramendra to kindly give the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Neha. Uh, so uh, I'm uh, uh, pleased to be here on behalf of uh, Society for Promotion of Science and Technology, Nasi Chandigarh chapter, Insa Inyas Chandigarh chapter, to convey my gratitude. So first and foremost, I would like to thanks uh, Professor Patro uh, to be here for, the, for this talk uh, from his very busy schedule. I'm thankful to Professor Ganguly, uh, who uh, accepted our invitation as a guest of honor, and uh, he was here. 
so uh, uh, thank you professor patro again for his uh, enlightening talk starting from uh, history of uh, inst to the progress and the achievement uh, and his motivational message for these youngsters uh, thank you sir for your uh, motivational sure. talk so being a member of inst family it is uh, my privilege to attend this uh, today's lecture where both founding director and current director are present so uh, i extend uh, my uh, really heartfelt thanks to all the member of uh, spsti uh, mainly professor orun gover dr kya dharambir mr dharambir uh, mohipal sharma and other uh, uh, attendees of this today's lecture i would like to thank uh, to all the members of nasi chandigarh chapter and inyas chandigarh chapter for their association and pscst for their support my special thanks to all the distinguished uh, guests uh, present here professor kk versin professor sattomurthy professor khanna and all other distinguished guests who are present here today so uh, and uh, thank you all uh, who all the attendees for uh, attending this today's meeting uh, and finally thank you all thank you thank you very much thank you dr ramendra i request uh, uh, mahipal ji to kindly share the details for the next talk what they will be and when thank you ma'am but there is no any detail for next talk okay yeah no no there is the next talk in this series is, is being given by director iit roper namely professor rajiv ahuja on may 11 2023 okay uh, the crick c had adopted the national technology day as its annual day and we have uh, been trying to host meeting on behalf of the chandigarh institution on national technology day every year and this year's may 11 2023 marks the completion of 10 years of the signing of the original document so professor ahuja will give this talk on that day and the guest of honor on that day will be professor reno which the vice the vice chancellor of punjab university who is the nominal notional head of the crixi uh, platform as a uh, vc pu so may 11 is our next day next talk and on may 27 there is going to be a panel discussion which is uh, related to how to strengthen the inclusive character of higher education in the iits isers and other national institutions we have had some difficulties in these institutions in recent years there have been numerous articles written in in recent weeks on the difficulties being faced by students in sustaining their inclusive character so the, the former secretary mhrd the former chairman of aict the former chairman of association of indian universities Uh, the director of uh, AIMS uh, Rishikesh, and uh, also other persons who have been associated in nurturing the young people at Aiza Mohali. Several people would be there in a panel discussion, which will be hosted for for a two-year two-hour period on the SPSTI platform, and that is on May twenty-seven, between eleven and one. and a notice will come to all of you so at least two events are planned in the month of may may 11 national technology day and the saturday may 27 a panel discussion on how to sustain and strengthen the inclusive nature of education in our national centers of excellence thank you thank you what is the timing for the 11th may like today that time so and yeah. time is to, and venue is it would be in the hybrid mode and the time and venue is to be decided as per the convenience of professor rajiv ahuja and professor renu vij so i haven't got this the overlapping slots from them but that is what is there it will be in the hybrid mode either at csir imtech or in the punjab university because there okay. is going to be a, some national event in delhi on the national technology day so depending upon when that event is we don't want a clash with that event which is uh, to be sort of we would would be in the hybrid mode in delhi so as soon as we know the details of that we'll be able to fix our timing we do not want to clash with that so in a few days time this is what professor khosla told me give me a week's time and he would come back to us as to how and when to hold it 
but this event on behalf of all the Chandigarh regions is scheduled on May 11, the National Technology Day, to mark the completion of our working together. Good, fine, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Grover, uh, Dr. Professor thank Grover, you, thank you, Professor Amitava, thank you, all the dignitaries, thank you so much. So we can close the session for today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.